if you're looking for a scan tool and you can't make your mind up in today's video i'm going to show you guys the ms 908s pro by autel i was looking for a good scan tool that i can use for my mobile repair business and i was stuck between a few i wanted to do online programming so i bought the 908s pro from autel this right here is my new to me vehicle with 69,000 miles i'll make a separate video on it but let's hook up the scan tool to it and you know go over all the features that the Autel has. This is the J-Box. This is what allows you to do online programming. This allows us to have wireless connection and we can hook up Ethernet and everything to it. So it's a basic J-Box. The scan tool has a camera which is nice if you have a if you're programming a headlight and you have to scan the barcode on a lot of newer cards you have to scan the barcode. You can actually use the camera to scan that barcode and it has this hook so you can just put it on the steering wheel like that and you can use this as a nice stand when you're working inside of the vehicle so this is the screen you're gonna have once you open it up pretty basic stuff you can buy the 8s equipment I don't have any of that at the moment uh, those can be pretty expensive uh, I think they are eighteen thousand dollars or so. yeah shop manager VCI manager you can update your uh, VCI through here OEM authorization Chrysler vehicles I believe 2018 and up you will need that in order to perform any programming I'm, I think you can still scan the vehicles but I don't think you can program without the OEM authorization it has a maxi scope which I, I bought the Autel MP408 which is a software that you can hook directly up to the scan tool you don't need a, a laptop and you can actually get the oscilloscope here also has the battery test you can actually buy a battery uh, tester also from Autel talking about the scan tool here let's go over uh, the scan tool so we'll hook up to my vehicle we got a European car it's a Mercedes Benz right here and it also has mercedes-benz light duty we're gonna do just a standalone diagnostics we can do a automatic reading of the vin once we get there on the top here it shows our battery voltage 14.6 good indication if the car is not charging i got a battery light on and you hook this up you start the car boom right there you don't have to use a voltmeter so this process here can take a little bit on some cars it takes a lot longer especially the actual quick test can you know can be a couple minutes depending on how many control units there is once the vin is red these are the options that it gives us we can do vehicle profile which will give us information about what type of vehicle it is so we got a 163 that's the chassis number the designation this is what we use at mercedes so if you know when we uh, went into WIS we could type in 163.154 and it will tell us this is the transmission that's in this model and all of that good stuff and you know this is the engine and everything so programming coding transmission calibration you can go into all of these whatever has a software or, or something that you can program it will be here this also this can tool is very good with the European market so any BMW uh, Mercedes Audi it's pretty good it can do a lot for those vehicles so this will give us information about you know tire size uh, like things like this I think we can edit a bunch of these so electronic selector module let's see what this is it says fixed or not fitted uh, so if there is something that you know your car uh, may have but it's not actually put into the into the vehicle so for different markets the European market could have an option but the American market could not typically what it is is just in the software they disable it So as we can see there's speed limit right here this is a uh, something that you cannot do with a cheaper scan tool I can put the speed limit all the way to 250 kilometers per hour not that this car will go 250 kilometers per hour but it won't have a limiter so boom I just changed that 
uh, all-wheel drive I think we can probably change uh, this if you know if you don't want it to have all-wheel drive but you don't want to do all of that stuff so these are good stuff that you can do on some of these vehicles so if you were to put a Distronic on this vehicle advanced cruise control it's pretty much what Distronic is if you wanted to put that on there you can actually enable that software on it external vehicle speed control Distronic uh, present or cruise control function in traction system and you can actually you know use make this vehicle more useful and so that's a bunch of stuff that you can you can do uh, to these control units you can do you know transmission airbag whatever the case may be you can do a lot with this scan tool and for these types of changes you don't even need ethernet you can actually do them straight from the scan tool with no ethernet so there's some of the functions that that does so we'll go to hot functions now we can do an oil reset I think um, I guess this can do it with with the tool here uh, I thought sometimes if it cannot the tool cannot do it it will tell you how to do it so I'll give you the instructions instead of doing it for you some you know some of these cannot do it so I guess you can do an auto oil reset we're not going to do that at the moment uh, so that's a lot of cars like newer cars you will have a lot more hot functions that you can do stuff in here you can either select individual control or modules or we can do a auto scan if you're diagnosing a car for the first time auto scan is a great feature that will go over all of the control units and it will give you uh, any faults that might be stored so there we go we're finding some faults we can pause this if you don't want it to continue any further. Over here it will tell you the progress, but if you don't want it to continue any further, you can hit pause and then it will allow you to read the codes. But let's go over through the whole process and then we will read that report. Okay, we're almost done. That's the last control unit right here. So this is all done. You can go over and you can see there's actually a lot of faults uh, stored. We can go to report, quick erase will erase them okay we'll you know depending on which control unit you have selected okay we'll go into that control unit but for right now let's go into report and this will give us a printout what we can do then is go up at the top here and we can either report this to cloud which means if you have internet uh, into the scan tool it will store it into the cloud of the hotel scan tool so if we go down to the bottom right here it will tell us what defaults are so we have stored event the supply voltage of terminal 87 is too low typically this can be from a uh, low battery so not too worried about that uh, steering angle sensor not initialized also same thing that could be if a battery dies pressure sensor all of these stuff they're all stored nothing current uh, you want to, you know, if it says present or current, that's the ones that you want to look at. So, fault in can communication, brake assist system, fuel level sensor, short circuit to ground or open circuit. Again, stored. Positioner motor, position sensor, power supply is faulty. This is for the transfer case. And you will get a lot of weird faults like this if a battery dies. And none of these so far these are the only ones that are current right now so let's see lower operating panel with power window function exterior rear view mirrors left supply voltage of the setting potentiometer is faulty vertical adjustment signal is faulty mirror memory not fitted so these I can move the mirrors perfectly fine so we'll have to look into that I'm not too worried about those the life signal of the airbag control module cannot be received sporadically these airbags the older cars I don't know I don't think new cars have an expiration date but the older cars they actually had a life that the airbags needed to be replaced by but if you know anything about replacement of the airbags especially if they have airbags on the seats over the over the roof 
we were talking about very very expensive repair so I'm gonna clear quick erase all of these faults anything that is still current will stay as faulty will not clear it a couple of faults remain so let's take a look at these see what these are we got for ESP we'll go down here steering angle sensor not initialized so these are all stored maybe I'll have to turn the key off for these so let's try that let's turn the key off turn it back on and let's hit quick erase again and see if that will uh, get rid of those faults maybe they're not erasing so there could be something there although they're stored um, I guess we'll you know we'll start by going over to the control units uh, at there will be instances where you will go into the control unit and you can actually clear them from there so let's I'll go over all of these functions right here we got ECU information it will give you part numbers or anything like that right here we got a part number who supplies it hardware status I think that might be the year 44th week of 2000 this is a 2002 I think that's what it means we got trouble codes in here these are all stored well uh, we can if you're hooked up to internet you can actually hit search and this will bring up Google if somebody has had an issue like this so somebody here steering angle sensor replacement you know small stuff like that just to get an idea sometimes if you need it uh, you can do that you can erase the faults from here report to cloud etc or, or escape so I'm gonna try and clear the faults here so switch ignition off and leave it off for 10 seconds and then we'll switch it back on again after 10 seconds switch the ignition on again and hit yes and this will give us a good indication whether that fault is still there or not because like I said sometimes you might have to go into the actual control unit for it we'll go out hit trouble codes again and see if anything has returned and nothing yet so we can look at live data if you're looking at wheel speed sensor anything like that you can uh, actually you know select if you wanted to look at all the wheel speed sensors you can select them and you can hit existing here and it will show you only these I think you can only graph yeah you can graph merge up to three signals so if you know that you know your front two are good but you want to have one of them you can just graph merge and drive and this will you know give you uh, the speeds and see if any of them drop out while you're driving I'm sure a bunch of you guys may know this already but just you know some people may not that's why I'm going over it we'll turn the vehicle on right here I pressed the the brake and the stop lamp switch no contact it says on so there is contact at the moment now there is no contact and this one will do the opposite of that one there so as you can see parking brake indicator on if I take the parking brake off it should go to off well for parking brake it will go to off and then I put the the parking brake back on and it's on again so this doesn't have too too much information here but you will have a brake pressure sensor so the more you press the brakes the more pressure you'll have and just an indication that's 1000 psi in the braking system that's why you don't want your brakes to fail we can do active tests if there is anything that you can uh, activate high pressure return flow pump intake solenoids rpm sensor uh, a bunch of these intake solenoid valve pressure stop lamp suppression so you can do a bunch of these stuff f3 will turn them on off um, it's good if if you're diagnosing something that that this feature gives you a lot more than the mp808 that i had previously or mk808 i forget what the designation was for the l lesser autel and we can do control unit adaptations this we can do coding 
and or other stuff zero point variation steering angle lateral acceleration sensor so you can reset it right here uh, okay set values to zero so I'm not gonna do any of that you can code break which I don't know what exactly this is oh I, depending which brakes you have I guess you can code them and it's kind of a let's go out of that driving test perform stationary adjustment of rotary speed and lateral acceleration sensor and it says see uh, the manual I don't need any of those functions at the moment but if you go into the ECM that will give you more information so let's go into sh instrument cluster see what the instrument cluster has see what we can possibly change uh, in these service resets so you can do the oil service reset from there you see your information again it's gonna have the part number when it was built and all of these stuff so the software is 50 first week of 2000 hardware is 27th week of 2001 and uh, trouble codes we don't have any trouble codes we'll go to active tests so this is a perfect indicator wipers so front wipers I hit the wipers on and nothing is happening So rear window wiper, let's see if this will turn on. So I guess neither of them turn on. I don't know why it gives you the option if they're not gonna turn on. Uh, turn signals, left turn signal. We'll turn it on, see if that turns on. I cannot quite tell if it does. Let me go outside. So here's something that it says it will do, but it cannot do. So it, it couldn't turn the wipers on, function not supported. Uh, I'm not sure why it will give you this, if that's the case. Uh, central locking, let's see what that is. Before carrying on a test, always open the door or window, otherwise there's a risk of being locked out. Close from inside. I don't think this car has, yeah, this car does not support this. So there's a bunch of these stuff that this car cannot do. Upsetting, knowing you know you have a $2,000 scan tool, it says it will do something and it cannot do it. But you know, that's why they say you can't trust just one scan tool. Hey, that's the thing with these aftermarket scan tool guys, not everything will be covered in from one scan tool. So like I said, all of that pretty much did a whole bunch of nothing. Let's go into the ECM, see if we can get something from, from the ECM. And let's see where that is here. Uh, ME, that's what we call it, a Mercedes 2.8, wow. Very, very old software. Okay, my battery's low, I understand. So we can look at a live data. It has a lot of live data, this scan tool, especially for the newer cars. Uh, the running smooth of engine. So if we have any issues here, oil temperature is low, oil level. So I guess it's not really smooth running of the engine, to be honest. Okay, right here. So smooth running of the engine. Uh, you want to have these cylinders all at about the same so they're all about zero the car runs perfect there is no issues if one of these was m uh, much higher or much lower than the other then you can go after that cylinder if there's no fault and but you have a misfire because sometimes that can happen right here you can uh, go to each single one and it will tell you if there's a fault if there's a misfire that happens uh, but it won't store a fault for you'll see it right here so if one of them accumulates you know like 30 40 50 uh, misfires uh, as per the software but 
you have no faults and you can go after that cylinder and see whether it's a weak spark plug you know semi clogged injector and something of that sort so you can use a lot of these a lot of these values lambda control right here this is for um, for the oxygen sensors so it gives us the millivoltage but I want to see the the actual numbers I want to look at the fuel trims so here's a but like there's a lot of um, PIDs that it gives you for different vehicles I don't see the fuel trims yet so let me let me see where the fuel trims are on this so I found the values here I can do a graph merge right here we can pay attention to them in a graph form uh, we can either look at the number here or just look at the values so the green and red those are the sensors and then we got the vehicle speed or the engine rpm fault paths i think this might tell us access for an issue aiding the fault path diagnosis of the oxygen sensors step one so kind of like do these in order so i want to go back to the me one more time uh and just show you the active tests that we can do in the me there is a good amount of stuff that you can do with this one right here you can you know turn fuel pump on and off switch over valve throttle valve actuator charcoal canister shut off that's uh when you're doing smoke test um we got fuel tank leakage test i don't know if this will actually do it itself but there's the newer mercedes you were actually able to do this without a smoke machine and it was a pretty good test it will pretty much like pull vacuum on the system so there you have it guys these are all stuff that you can do fuel injectors you know shut off each injector one by one i hope this gave you a better idea if this scantle is for you or not let me know down in the comments below what you think about this scantle and if it's something that you're still interested in buying or not uh, or if there's a better scantle that in your opinion that you think that i may want to take a look at um, if you like this content please leave a like consider subscribing and i'll see you on the next video peace